Starting off the comparison of different four-lane train junctions is the original loop junction from Brian's Trains version 2.6 and before. In the upper left you can see a real-time measurement of the efficiency of the junction. This is the number of trains per minute that are passing through it and it's essential to have this kind of measurement in order to properly compare the performance of the different junctions. As you can see pretty quickly there's several problems. Notably, unless the trains are turning right, they tend to use the inner loop. Also, only one train goes through at a time, even when it seems that two could go in parallel. In this new version of the same loop design, there's three major improvements. First, the lane changer at the entry has been removed. Train routing is done on an individual basis with no regard to what other trains in the system might be doing. It always tries to map the shortest path to its destination, so if it's easy for the train to switch over to the inner loop, then it will always take that path. It's just shorter. The problem is that a train going straight through will block the path that a train turning left would want to use, thus reducing the throughput of the junction. On the exit, the lane change is now asymmetric. This added some space for chain signals, allowing the separation of the two parallel sections, meaning trains can go through it at the same time. The outer loop is made bigger, which allows for chain signals to be placed at the crossings of the entry exit of the inner loop. The result of all this is a 60% throughput improvement over the original design. This is my first attempt at a non-loop junction. I figured I would make the two center lanes some kind of express lane for going straight through and use the outer lanes for turns, although they can also go straight through. This didn't work so well in practice. As you can see, the performance is actually worse than the loop junction I showed you previously. The problem is that with all the turns having to be made on the outer lane, when the destinations of the trains are evenly distributed, most of the trains will move to the outside track, which causes congestion there. Also, every turn crosses the center lanes, making it harder for the straight-through trains to pass through. Moving the left turn lanes to the inner tracks means that things are now evenly distributed. Trains going right or straight can use the outer lane. Trains going straight or turning left will use the inner lane. That balances the load between the two tracks. Lane changers on the straight through tracks allows those trains to exit on whatever rail is best suited for them. Left turn or right turn trains, though, must remain on the inner or outer lane, respectively. If I had more space, I would have put the lane changers on all the exits, but I can't without growing the junction, and that would break compatibility with all the previous spacing. The performance of this junction is 25% better than the improved loop junction shown previously, and almost exactly double the performance of the original loop junction from previous editions. Since the crossing of lanes is the biggest impediment to performance of a junction, I thought I'd try a design that had no left turns at all. In this case, the throughput appears better until you remember that about one-third of all trains have to turn around and come back through the junction a second time. Donald Knuth famously said that premature optimization is the root of all evil. That's also true here. There's no way I would have been able to see what worked and what didn't without creating some kind of test rig. I'll call it the large train collider. But it's necessary to actually check the designs and measure the throughput to know what works and what doesn't.